One, two, three. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. All right. Helps when you got a pro in the room. Come on. I'm Dr. Kiki Baker Barnes, Commissioner of the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference. We're ready to call this event to order, and I'd like to introduce our host for today, the founder of Black Star Network, Mr. Rowley L. Martin. Yo, first, we're going to follow the speakers right behind. That's why we get interference. So we're going to move over here. All right, so how are we doing? Good. All right, good to see everyone here. Uh, this room actually was uh, nice and cool a little bit earlier, uh, but now it's a little packed. Uh, so we are glad to be here, glad to be back in New Orleans, uh, seeing so many folks here. Uh, but uh, we're not just in New Orleans. Uh, we're also, this is being streamed all across the country, all across the world. HBCU League Pass, Black Star Network, other platforms. So the beauty of technology uh, is we're not just talking to folks uh, who are sitting in the room. Uh, as Kiki said, I'm Roland Martin, uh, the host of Roland Martin Unfiltered and also CEO of Black Star Network. We celebrated four years of Unfiltered on Sunday and one year of Black Star Network on Sunday as well. And uh, it is great to do this. Um, I'll explain this a little bit later, but literally uh, this came together almost 60 days ago at Essence uh, here in New Orleans, and I'll tell you more about that uh, when we get to that portion of the program, but it is absolutely great uh, to be here and seeing all of you. Uh, we want to start this thing off first, uh, and Kiki put it together. Now, first of all, she's like, she's speaking, and she come back, she come back, but she like running back and forth. So she'll be uh, chatting a little bit later, but I do want to bring up uh, the president uh, of the Council of Presidents uh, for opening remarks uh, to explain why we are all here and why we are so excited. And so put your hands together for the president of Tougaloo College, Dr. Carmen J. Walters, president of the GCAC Council of Presidents. Thank you, Roland. And what an opportunity to be back in this great city, my hometown, to see all of you and to make this fantastic announcement. I'm excited, most importantly, to see the students. So if you are a student in the room, stand up so we can see who you are. And we want to make some noise so everybody knows. Yes, 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 that these students are here. Today is a great day. Um, we are here to uh, make a very important announcement. And when I say we, I want to uh, include my colleagues. I would like uh, the president of Dillard University, Dr. Ford, to please stand as we give her a round of applause. She's new to the city, but not new to the work. And so we're happy to have you. And then, of course, Dr. Amons, who is the president at Southern University in New Orleans, my alma mater. Happy to have you. And then we have some leaders in the room. If we have missed you, we'd like you to stand as well when we, when we announce this. But we have elected officials in the room, and that's always important. Uh, we have Tracy Flemings. Uh, and I, I told Kiki, I've been in Mississippi since 2012, so I'm forgetting my French. Uh, so, so say the name for me again. Davalier, there you go. Davalier, thank you. Deputy Chief Judge, and welcome. Thank you for being here. Austin Badon, Clerk of First City Court, my friend and brother. Welcome. Happy to have you and your spouse today. Nakisha Irvin Knott, Civil District Court, Arlene's Parish. So happy to have you. And if I have missed you, give me a wave so we can know that you're in the room or you can check in later and we will recognize you. Thank you for taking out of your busy time to be with us today for this strategic partnership that we are getting ready to forge. Um, I know you're going to hear more about the partnership, but I want to say that this is life-changing. It's historic and it's one to remember. It's a model for the country. And I want to recognize Dr. Kiki Barnes. She and I, I think, are making history because we are the first two women to lead this organization together. And look where we are taking it. So thank you all so much for being here. I'll turn it back over to Roland. All right, then. So uh, Kiki gets to actually make the announcement. Yeah, you back. I told y'all she's going to be running back and forth. That's the song, back and forth. All right, so she's going to actually uh, unveil uh, what is actually happening today. All right. 
Uh, before I make the announcement, though, I do have to acknowledge my colleagues who are in the room. We have our athletic directors from our conference who are here, so I'd like for them to stand. Uh, Roderick Smothers, Jr. serves as our president of the council, as well as athletic director at Philander Smith College. Keith Barnes, athletic director at Tougaloo College. Dr. Linda Bell, Pre uh, athletic director at Dillard University. Bruce Piper, where are you, Bruce, who is the athletic director at uh, Wiley College. And is, did Jarvis make it? Jarvis Stephen will be here. He's the athletic director at Russ. So thank you so much. We have our GCAC. Where, who am I missing? Where's James? James? Oh, James! James, please stand. James Matthews, <laughs> Southern University in New Orleans. Can't be hiding over there. My team. We have, we have, we've worked together to, to do some really good things, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to share in this moment with you. Forty years, the GCAC, the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference, has operated with a part-time commissioner. Um, this year, the Council of Presidents decided that they were ready to move in a different direction. They wanted to see us move upward. And so one of the decisions, probably the best decision I think they probably made was bringing me home, right? <laughs> <laughs> Deciding to... I know your back hurt right come now. Come on, come on. Oh, no. But, this, but the, the decision of the Council of Presidents to commit to this conference um, is really critical. Um, and because we've had the opportunity to now to have full-time focus on the initiatives and what we can do collectively, we're excited to, to announce and share some things today. In our meeting in July, I shared my vision with the Council of Presidents, and I'm excited to share that with you now. We see the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference as the premier HBCU Athletic Conference. As a conference, we realize the power we have as a collective to negotiate better partnership and opportunities that will strengthen us all. Today's announcements are the first steps to realizing that vision. I am excited to announce the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference has signed a $1.2 million media rights partnership with Urban Edge Network, Roland Martin's Black Star Network, making it the largest media rights deal in NAIA history. And here to talk a little bit more about that is the founder and CEO of Urban Edge Network, my friend, Mr. Todd Brown. Well, welcome. Hope everybody can hear me. It's always a pleasure to be back in the, my birth state of Louisiana. I'm from a small town across the street from Natchez called Faraday in Concordia Parish. So I want to, want to, yeah, you know what it is. You know what it is. And so. Anybody got any MLK funeral home fans? <laughs> wait anymore? a minute. Wait a minute. I'm just saying. I, so, so this, this relationship is, is not just historical for, for our brand family, but it's historical for the region. We believe that every town is a sports town, which is a quote from one of the early financial executives and advertising executives from ESPN. And we believe that every town is a small sports town with a tribe of loyalty, of history. And you think about it, the first HBCU was started at Cheney State in 1837. So it predates segregation and the civil rights, you know, and it goes back to the notion of the best of us are at these institutions. Not just the sports, but the student activity in general. People use the term culture I think Dr. Barnes, in a way that, that doesn't really connote the impact that HBCUs have in the communities around 100 still active, used to be upwards to 120, um, some say 107. But what we say is every one of those towns is impacting lives in a powerful way. So when we think about Urban Edge Networks, which my partner in the back, Hardy Pelt, and I formed uh, almost 19 months ago, we thought about HBCUs as a marketplace. And what I said in front of the advertising community is that there's 500 NASCAR level events that take place every semester in HBCU towns. And I grew up in Oklahoma after leaving Louisiana. And I remember when NASCAR started, it was a bunch of guys driving around a dirt track. And then the brand showed up. 
And when the brand showed up, you have multi-million dollar drivers, you have enterprise, you have connections, but more importantly, you're no longer in a conversation about a photo op and a big paper check for $12,000 and a photo op. We wanted to move folks into a conversation where you're invited into the media business. And when we signed initially with Gremlin, which is one of our partners, we decided that the difference in what we do and what others do, we invite you into the media business. So, and to make it very plain, and, and my mother requires that I make things plain, God rest her soul, is Oprah Winfrey used to have a deal with King World where she was working on one of the shows. Her life changed when she became an equity partner and, and started to actually participate in the revenue streams related to media. And so we, we are inviting not just today's GCAC, but tomorrow's GCAC into what you represent in the marketplace, which is a very strategic and part, important media market, which collectively, as black Americans, we spend $1.6 trillion annually. And very little of that matriculates back to us. And we boldly say, Roland Martin and myself and others, when we talk to the media industry, that this conversation is about equity. It's about us monetizing black bodies on our institutions and repatriating that money back in the institutions. And if you want, if you want an example of that, and I'll, for the students in the room, if we do a multi hundred thousand dollar deal for an eight week run of Walgreens commercials, fifty thousand goes into the Nils program, and those students, and I say this proudly, and my partner didn't believe it, those students are getting five hundred to two thousand dollars a month in their Nils program. And for those students, 80% of that money they're sending back home to their mothers and their parents and their smaller siblings. It's transformational when you're part of a partnership. And I don't want to speak too long on it, but the reality of it is, is we're, to, we're coming to, trans, to transfer the power back into the institutions and to the students. And then at, I'll close on this. Folks don't know the hidden stories and legacy that's in your libraries. Forget about what you're doing now. The library conversation of you telling your story and, and we like to use the term sports is a gateway yep. Yep. this is a gateway into a conversation that's not being had yep. in a hundred active communities and so with this historic partnership we embrace the reality that media and, and hardy hate my partner hardy hates when i say this <laughs> there's a billion dollars spent on media every day and three billion <laughs> every super bowl weekend Blacks participate in less than, black equity ownership in media participates in less than 1% of that. Our business is formed and our partnership with Roland Martin, our partnership with strategic folk are inviting us into a conversation. It's not talking about how many people attended your game, but what you represent in the media landscape when it comes to monetization and the business of how we spend our money and forcing conversations. This is the most uncomfortable part of this dialogue, and Hardy likes to say this to every one of our partners. If you're not ready, let us know, because we're about to have a really uncomfortable conversation, not about a big paper check, the photo op, and some freshman scholarships. We want, as Roland says, you to show us the money the way we show you every day at Piggly Wiggly's, at Food Lions, at Safeway, at J.C. Penney's, at Macy's, and we don't want the photo op of Ralph Lauren selling us some more stuff and we're smiling, we want equity. And we want to participate in all of those streams. And we don't want to go to Macy's and see all of the Panhell, and I'm an alpha, love to see the frats and sororities in their stores. But we want to see their stores in us. And that's what this relationship's about. I've preached too long, but I want to tell you, this is hard work because we love the show, but we're not good at the business. And we don't want to have the conversation, as Roland says, to partner with folks that are in the business of media and have a different conversation than appearing on someone's platform for $9.99 if they decide to pick our games, surcharge, and the games that they select and money that doesn't make any economic sense and have an, doesn't have an impact on our institutions and on our students. That's why this is important, and everyone's going to be looking at this deal, and I'll say this as a closing statement. Um, there was a game at Arkansas State last week with Gramlin, and one of the key strategic executives in the sports business said, uh, to my partner, this is not a HBCU problem. This is a small market problem. Mm -hmm. If you're not in the big package of the Power Five, you're not seen, heard, or impacted, but your aspiration is to be in show. We are building a business model with our partners to change this conversation to business. 
and that business of student activities being monetized on your channel. Every one of the member institutions for the GCAC will have a channel. That's your homepage, and the conference will have a channel. And they're participating not just in the money that you talked about, but in the revenue share of the money that we bring in. Our hope is to transform your organizations into an Oprah type impact, because we want to get our share, which should be about 13, 14 percent of a billion dollars a day <laughs> of advertising revenue and three billion on Super Bowl weekend. So I'll close with that, and that's what we're about. All right. So Todd, stay there. Stay there. So. So you heard Todd say, so each university will have a channel uh, on the network. Part of the uh, deal also uh, will be, uh, we also understand amplification. Um, April 3rd, 1968, uh, night before Dr. King was killed, most people talk about his speech and they talk about the mountaintop, but folks don't want to realize that it was a 43 minute, 16 second speech. And in it, he talked about the black collective. And he said black people individually or poor collectively represent one of the largest economies in the world. He said, if we think and operate collectively, we can change the economic paradigm in this country. And so the reason this deal is important is because the conference operates as a collective. Each school individually, they will ignore, they will say, you're too small. But you can't ignore all eight. And so we also aren't looking at this solely as, well, eight HBCUs. You have to remember, it's eight HBCUs, eight cities, in multiple states, with alumni. And so now you're talking about a much broader point of view. And that's really uh, how uh, this whole thing came together. We talk about collective. One of the things that we'll do as a result, 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 result of this partnership, I have nearly 4 million social media followers. And so all things related to Gulf Coast will be also pushed out on my platforms as well. So now you have amplification not only of the schools, not only of the conference, not only HBCU League Pass, but my social media as well, plus the show, plus the network. That's how we operate in collectives. So when we go meet with uh, these ad agencies and when we go meet with companies, we're bringing all of that to bear. So it's a little hard for them to say no off the bat when you're talking about that level of scale. And that's really what this is all about. Uh, to understand how quickly this came together, we were in, in Atlanta at the UNCF uh, summit. Uh, I got a couple of phone calls because uh, folks had heard me talk about the business of the business on my show a lot, specifically about HPC because I'll be perfectly honest, there are a number of HBCUs and conferences that have signed awful deals because the folks who negotiated it had no idea about, no idea about business. Uh, if, you wanted, if something wrong with your heart, don't talk to me. That ain't what I do. Go call a cardiologist. But if you want to talk about how to, how to do media, you might want to come talk to me. And so uh, we, uh, we sat down and I sent an email and Kiki happened to be in Atlanta, so we had breakfast and then we met. The next thing I know, uh, we were at Essence a couple of weeks later uh, having a meeting with various presidents and staff, uh, made our presentation, laid it all out, and that was almost 60 days ago. And so what you also have to understand, going back to the collective part, what Dr. King talked about, you're talking about a black-owned company a black-owned company with HBCU conferences. And so when you talk about what is being now transferred, now you have money that's going into multiple black-owned companies, black-owned institutions going to African Americans. That's how you create the power, the black economic power, uh, because we're just as smart, actually smarter than most of the other folks. Uh, and so we understand how to do these various deals and how to execute them. Uh, what you also are talking about, and most people look at this only from a sports deal. And yes, from a conference standpoint, you think sports, but we're not only going to be, as Todd says, monetizing sports, we're talking about monetizing the institution. So when we're having conversations with financial services companies, we're factoring in which schools have business programs. If we're talking to media companies, we're factoring in which schools have media programs. And so we're talking about driving resources not just to athletic coffers, but to the educational programs as well, because when we sit at the table and negotiate those deals, again, we're bringing the whole conference to bear, the institutions and the cities, and that's what no other HBCU conference can say, not one. The model that we've created here, no one else is doing in the country, and if they are doing it, they're likely the SEC, the Big 12, or the Power Five conferences. That's why this is significant. Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing. I, I have to acknowledge a couple of my partners in the room. So uh, we have the Black College News Networks with Roy Evans, who is the president of theirs, one of our strategic partners. We also have SUTV. Roy, don't be afraid to wave. Roy, wave, wave, wave. wave. He, he's a, I he's didn't a, lay the whole thing about black on 
on you like, uh, wait, Roy. There you go. He, he's a rattler, but you know he absolutely has been in this business for decades, and really is a, a strategic partner for us as we move toward signing what I think is going to be multiples of tens of of HBCUs. We also have SUTV in the back. If you saw the uh, Benedict College game this weekend, we're shooting in 4K. As, and, and this is uncomfortable uh, in a room full of black people to say, but my my apps would not be accepted unless it looked like white folks did it. So if it looked like this and it looks like that, y'all ain't coming back. So I ex ask everyone in the room to download HBCU League Pass Plus on any platform. Right. We're on Android, iOS, Roku, Fire Stick, streaming. And when you see the quality of the product that we're putting out, we knew we had to invest in strategic relationship. And Marcus in the back, you can't see, and his spouse, they are making that happen. We just shot a game at Florida Memorial, okay? And it looked like it was played in the SEC, and they were playing Edward Waters. And there were 2,500 people at the game, full band regalia, and people were like, my God, you actually have a high SEDU ratio. You said, because guess who most of the people are shooting games in sports are? Black folks working all that stuff. But the idea of us doing the whole right. business cycle, right. but, but I wanted to acknowledge uh, our partner from Nielsen who's in the room, because Nielsen, the measuring company who measures the, the ratings, the impact, the markets that we're serving, that's how media money is spent. And no one's really done a deep dive on the HBCU markets to validate the story I tell about the 500 NASCAR level events. Well, if no one's there, if no one saw it, did it really happen? And the activation, and I'll share what a large beverage company said to Hardy and I on a call. They do Super Bowl and big time events, and they throw a lot of parties and, and classics. And they said, why am I spending so much money on these large halftime events? I should be activated in 100 markets where you actually go to the store or the store in my town, and you make grocery. <laughs> So you, that's where you buy the product. That's where you go to. And so what we're doing with this thing in our partnership is, is having a media conversation. Yep. This is not an event conversation. We're welcoming you to the media business. And we, we plan to have Dr. Barnes on our calls when we talk at Upfronts. And I have to say this, Roland. 80% of the media dollars are committed during something called Upfronts. And until a year ago, blacks who own media companies have never been invited to that conversation, which is almost 100 years old. 80% of the money of that $322 billion or so is committed in that meeting. The other 20% is committed in a second meeting, which we're not at <laughs> in the middle of the year. So we're now invited to that meeting, and we bring actual HBCU folks to it. And I got to tell you, everyone wants to buy HBCU from me. They think it's something <laughs> that they can buy and they don't know what it is. And I say the majority, white people can name three HBCUs and black people can name six. So when they see us as HBCUs and an activation of the marketplace, it's transformative because we're now in the media business and we're not as scary as BLM and some of the commitments that were made, but we have to be more than a media company. We have to be a gateway into opportunity. We're gonna be announcing in the next week or so uh, another big conversation about us being a farm for talent, meaning HBCUs. So if there's a talent at Florida Memorial around aeronautics, then we should be forming relationships with the airline, with the manufacturers. If there's a competency in medicine, so that conversation doesn't happen as easily as you might think with industry. We're performing that opportunity in this relationship, but we're bringing relationships to bear where they create competency centers and say, my goal is to hire all of your class. And by the way, I'm not talking about the, the sexy ones that your students want. I'm talking about ones they don't know about. Like the store manager at Walmart making 600, making six figures, or, or the grocery manager. At, we, don't, we wanna look to competency centers in this conversation, and Hardy says, sports is a Trojan horse. The HBCU is the opportunity. So, so please look at this opportunity as a gateway to commerce, a gateway to enablement, a gateway to opportunity, and everyone now wants to do something with us, but we have to bridge that gap yeah. between how we do and how they do. Uh, Todd's point, when you talked about the quality, it was very interesting. Uh, I was at um, an event 
uh, in Cincinnati, and we had just launched the show. And it was, it was brother, he owned the, owned the business, and, and he meant well. He meant well. Uh, he said, he said, y'all got to support Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered. Now, don't look good at CNN. I was like, hold the hell up. <laughs> he said, our stuff look good. Now, see, the problem there was you trying to compare a startup business to one multi-billion dollar business. Uh, but we are, but because we've been in the media business, I've been in since I was 14 years old. This is the only thing I've done for 40 years. Uh, is we understand, again, quality, we understand what our folks want, and so that's why we are so hell-bent on how it looks. And so part of this partnership uh, is not just uh, with, the, with the five sports, but going in, assessing each institution, assessing uh, capabilities, uh, not just when it comes to uh, cameras, but also uh, uh, Wi-Fi, Internet, because uh, the reality is you could literally install robotic cameras on each campus, and you can actually control those cameras 5,000 miles away. So we understand how the business works. And so uh, all of these things are going to be happening. The point I made about aeronautics, that's that, again, if we're having media conversations with United Airlines Continental, we can then have a conversation saying, well, this has this type of program. Again, that's the capability that isn't brought to bear. And, and I'll make this last point before I uh, throw, throw to Kiki. Understand, and, and this might be real hard uh, for a lot of folks, especially a lot of our folks, we don't go to any meetings walking hat in hand with our head bowed and hoping they give us 10 cents on the dollar. Uh, Todd and I have had conversations where we've rejected seven fig six, six figure deals because they were too small. And they were like, we ain't never had my black tell us no. Uh, but we understand our value. And so understand when we go to meetings uh, on behalf of Gulf Coast Athletic, Athletic Conference, we are trying to get as much as possible, as Frank Lucas said in American Gangster, I'm going to get that money. Hey, hey. And that it has to be, and that little, that mindset has to change. I was on the phone today uh, with an HBCU president, and I said, your games are being shown at no additional monetization for your university. Yet this, these folks over here want to pay you 200000 Which deal do you want to take? So that, so this, there has to be a complete reprogramming, if you will, on how we appreciate our institutions and what our value is. This is the moment I call this the third reconstruction that we are in. The first two were awesome, they were political, but they never confronted the money. This one is about the money. And if we get our fair share, our institutions improve, uh, our, uh, as you said, when more money is going back to families, our economics improve. And so if we don't confront that, then I think what we've done is waste the opportunity. So that's why this partnership is also uh, extremely powerful. Man, they said, I feel like that's a drop the mic moment, but uh, <laughs> we got a few more announcements, so we can't do that right now. But thank you so much, Todd, um, Roland. Definitely looking forward to the partnership and helping our universities and institutions grow. Now, our second announcement. I really like this. Y'all think I can have a show? <laughs> well, you got a whole channel. Hey, can I get a show? I'm just saying. And plus, okay. plus, and plus, we own it, so we ain't got to ask nobody. Ooh, I like it. Y'all heard that? Okay, all right. We're going to move on. The Kiki Martin Show. <laughs> I, say, I like the way that sign. Come on. So we are really excited to announce a, a, another special announcement. We, um, it's, I, I like to call this alignment. That's what that's going to be our word for today. Alignment. Uh, we have a gentleman who's not with us here today, but Alvin works and helps us with some revenue. Um, he's a young, uh, budding athletic director. My uh, deputy. Um, Kelly Brooks, who's in the room, and I have some other team members that I acknowledge, but um, said, hey, I think we need to bring him to the table, and we need to, he, he's doing this work, and he can help us. So he got to work looking at our institutions and said, I think this guy might be it. So he reaches out to our, our next guest, we'll announce, uh, Bill Bynum, and starts talking about what we're doing, what we're trying to do. And Bill said, I, you know, hey, I, I, God, God must be in this, right? And so we had some conversations, had an opportunity to talk about what a partnership would look like. And today, we are proud to announce that Hope Federal Credit Union will be the official financial institution for the GCAC and the title sponsor for our GCAC basketball championships and baseball championships for the next two years. <laughs> and just that, for those that don't know, that mean he writing a check. <laughs> 
here to talk a little bit more about that, I'd like to invite up our partner here, CEO of Hope Enterprises, Hope Federal Credit Union, Mr. Bill Bynum. Dr. Barnes, you are a force of nature, and I'm glad to be on the Kiki Barnes show. <laughs> no, then, you know, let, let's keep talking about um, equity, empowerment. Let's talk about the money, you know, and it's not just about writing a check. We're proud to sponsor the basketball and the uh, men and women's basketball. Couldn't get, get away from women, you know. We know who runs the world, but if we... The, base, the basketball championships and the baseball championships, but this is a marriage made in heaven. It really is. And when you talked about Dr. King, when he was in Memphis, he also told folks, if you, if your financial institution is not meeting the needs of your community, then take your money to one that is. One that is. And, and so it was divine intervention that, that we connected because Hope Credit Union is the largest black and woman-owned financial institution in the country. That, that, that means that the majority of people who own us are not folks in some distant room making decisions about your community. It's people in your community. So everyone who's a member of our credit union is a member owner. So you are now a member owner of Hope Credit Union. So we're proud to host the accounts of the of the GCAC. Uh, we are her personal banker. If she needs financial solutions, then we will sit down and figure out how to address those needs. Uh, it's about empowerment. So Dr. King says he wanted to shift the movement, broaden it from legal rights, from voting rights, to make sure that people had the ability to support their families, to support their communities, to contribute. Um, as a valued member. And so when your financial institution values you, then you know that when you go there, you're more likely to get yes. You're more likely to get a path forward than to get a no. You're not going to be put in some computer and in an algorithm and be spit out. We're going to sit down with you and make sure that you understand what it takes to get to yes, and you're more likely to get yes. 90% of our mortgages are the black folks, uh, and most of them are first-time homeowners. Uh, what is the primary asset that's on those family balance sheet? It's their home. So you're talking about closing the wealth gap. Sixty-plus percent of our business loans are to black folks and women. If you look at the financial wealth gap, it's 10 to 1 black folks to white folks. It's 100 to 1 black families with children compared to white families with children. But when you're a business owner, it's three to one. It's not equal that it should be, but it changes the game. And so we're changing the game in these communities. And quite honestly, if, if you're looking at the strongest al black athletic conference in the, com in the country, why not partner with the best financial institution that has a 30-year track record of leaning into your communities? And Roland, um, we're going to put a billion dollars into, the, into these communities over the next few years. And quite honestly, I'd rather put every dollar of it into communities that are tied with the HBCU, because HBCUs pound for pound are the most important institution in this country. No one turns out the quality, the folks who had a greater difference in their community. And so it just makes business sense. It's a win-win for us. And so pound for pound, we're partnering with the greatest HBCU athletic conference. We're the, we're the greatest financial institution. We're already working with Dr. Walters. We're working with Dillard. We're working with Philander Smith. We're working with Oakwood. We're investing in a project that it helps transform access to healthy food around Oakwood University. We're looking at an investment around Fisk. And so in addition to working with the conference, we're going to invest, make investments in and around HBCU communities. We want every member, every staff person, every alumni, every student, every family member of HBCU schools to look at hope and know that you're going to get a fair deal. You're going to be respected. And so I want that billion dollars to go to the GCAC communities and I won't hope to be the primary financial institution for HBCUs in the United States. So look forward to working with you. All right. 
I want to acknowledge some of my colleagues. Kathy Saloy is the lead forward person for our partnership with GCAC. I'd like for my other colleagues to wave your hands, stand. I've got several. Uh, I've got a former board member. I saw Kim Bull here from New Orleans. So we, we, we'll, we'll be here for you to pick up the phone. And if you, if you have a banking relationship that's not working with you or for you, if you want a banking relationship with an institution that's going to be there and understands the needs of your communities, uh, call Hope, Commu Hope Community Credit, Hope Credit Union, hopecu.org. Thank, Thank you. All right. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a proud Tupelo alum. Hey! You know, she's going to leave with that. Doc, about to, she's, about to, she's about to cuss you out. Go ahead. All right. All right. And now we're down to our final announcement. After the final announcement and remarks, then we'll open it up for a few questions, and then we'll, we'll be done. We're going to have some music by K-Lamp Entertainment. Yeah. Okay. Good friend of mine, y'all. Good to, yeah. Y'all, K-Lamp is it. Okay. So our final, final announcement. As I shared a little bit earlier, the GCAC has been around for 40 years. You know, we've, um, we didn't have full-time staff at the time, and we didn't have a home. But now, due to this partnership and the things that have happened, we have a home. And that home is located right here at Maroon Workspace. black-owned company and a, a black-owned company by a, a Howard University alum. Our founder is here this afternoon, uh, Ms. Jade Brown Russell, the founder of Maroon Workspace. And here to share a little bit more about this partnership is the CEO of Maroon Workspace, Dr. Jawan Brown Alexander. Hello, everyone. It's amazing to see you all in our space. Welcome. Um, I want to just uh, start off before I get into my prepared remarks, and these are super short. <laughs> um, I just want to recognize uh, Councilman uh, Freddie King, who was in the space today, and Oliver Thomas. So we just want to uh, recognize them. They're, they were here to support you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, before I get into my prepared remarks, I, I first want to say to Kiki, this is not big, it's huge. Uh, for you all to choose us and select us as a partner, um, amazing. You are definitely a force of nature. I have seen you the past couple of days and what you've been able to do in just a matter of 24, 48 hours. Um, I don't know where you get the energy, ma'am. I don't. Um, you are not just doing the transactional work that, it's, that it takes to actually uh, move the conference but you're doing the transformational work that it takes to move a community. And so I am thoroughly impressed. Um, I can't say that enough. Um, we are all sitting and standing in a space um, that is on the front, on the moniker, it says Maroon. And that is representative of the Maroon people. The Maroon people fought for their freedom. Right? And they knew that that freedom would carry through generations. And so I want you to just reflect on that as we leave here today, um, just in this space that we're sitting in today and what it truly represents. And all of the comments, all of the folks that have spoken today, it's all bred together and it's all connected. So I just wanted to say that. So again, uh, good afternoon to everybody. I am Jawan Brown Alexander, as Kiki mentioned, Dr. Kiki. Uh, president and CEO of Maroon Inc. and Maroon Workspace. Our full team, along with our founder, Jade Brown Russell, are super excited that today, Gulf Coast Athletic Conference Commissioner, Dr. Kiki Baker Barnes, is announcing that this will be the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference headquarters. Maroon is a home for change makers, y'all to foster innovation, to collaborate with like-minded people and embrace equity. The shared workspace was created to bring together one of the most diverse communities in the country. That includes professionals, entrepreneurs, creatives, and don't forget techies. Maroon is at a critical juncture as we look to become an ally for communities advocates, experts, and organizations who fought and fight today for equity through business, education, 
public policy, research, and accountability. As we prioritize, identify, and connect black and brown leaders to meaningful opportunities for equitable outcomes, we are blessed and we are honored to be selected as GCAC's headquarters. Again, thank you all. Thank you, Kiki. Thank you, Dr. Barnes. Uh, much blessings, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Roland, it's on you. We can take some questions and then we've got to do some pictures and then get some music going. We've got right. snacks and some, some things over there for you, so we want to make sure you take, get some snacks, some water. It's a little hot there. Well, it is called a news conference, so uh, let's uh, go with any questions right here. Scott. Question. As a matter of fact, I want to acknowledge Scotty from Offscript. Could you stand up, Scotty? Hey, Scotty! The, Scotty is a world-class voice for HBCUs. He's a known personality that is, has expertise around sports, and you can please, please follow him. He has a channel on our network, and he really brings a perspective. And so the question is very important. When the marketplace looks at HBCUs, they look at it through a filter of is it sports? Is it just Dion who just reinvented it? What's really going on? And when, when we look at it as, as marketers and network owners, we look at it through the lens that north of 50% of HBCU students are women. And when brands look at it, they go, oh my goodness, these women buy everything. And they drive the decision making around commerce. So we hope and we've done this at Stillman already, that we can not only help with Title IX, but we can highlight and feature the unseen yeah. female athletes because the brands are coming to us and said, oh, I have some Pantene. I have a whole fabrics division. I have a whole plethora of opportunities to highlight the amazing things that are happening, not just with the student athletes, but with these women. And so when we think about sports coming back, we think that engagement is gonna define uh, the relationship at Urban Edge Networks. One of the relationships I haven't talked about, our first one that we penned was with the Negro Baseball League. Now, most folks believe that there's eight Negro League baseball teams. That's the ones that were acknowledged by white people. There were a over 100, I think it was 115. And one of the things we wanna do with relaunching HBCU baseball is connecting that heritage because over 40% of the Negro League players came from HBCUs. They played in HBC. Where do you think they played at? So the idea of that kinship and that relationship about activation and engagement, if you see what's happening with gymnastics, it's largely us at UCLA turning it out, being monetized by folks that aren't us. So we own the culture and what we mean is those things that make it hot. I was a group publisher of Ebony and Jet and a part owner of the Grio, which I sold to Byron a couple years ago. And what I used to say to advertisers is what I'm saying here. We own cool. This is the coolest commissioner in sports. We own cool. And when they say culture, they want our cool. And so I think we're going to uh, roll that cool factor out on a platform on 303 million devices that's accessible. Now, one of the things my partner, Hardy Pelt, would, would be really upset with me if I didn't say it. You have a job now as a member. You need to activate your base. You have alum, you have folks in your community. You should be pushing that message out in a powerful way because that message is what makes that sport important. And we need to be ambassadors of ourselves. We need to own our space. And lastly, not only do you get a, a, your own channel, but you should be programming that channel about conversations you wanna have in that community. And again, last statement. Most people that attend an HBCU event are the only people that sees it. I don't care if it's on the pay tier. We're not looking to increase our cable bill. We're not looking. We're looking for an opportunity to amplify these sports and student activity that broadens the reach and, and drives not just the social graph, but the commerce graph. So I think women's sports are going to be a very important part of everything we're going to be doing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what you think about the nation's first black newspaper, uh, Freedom's Journal. Uh, on March 16, 1827, uh, they wrote in the third paragraph, we wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. 
uh, and the reality is um, we, as a people, but I would dare, dare say HBCUs, we're waiting for someone mainstream to tell our story when you literally have black-owned companies that can. Um, I'm a graduate of Texas A&M, but I've done 18 commencements, 14 on HBCU campuses, and I've probably spoken at uh, 65 of this country's HBCUs. And every place that I've gone, I've literally had the exact same conversation with every president and vice president. How are you not properly telling your story? Uh, and so we're not going to be waiting for USA Today or the New York Times or the Washington Post to do a story on uh, the fifth gymnastic team. When, uh, when Diller's cheering squad won national, they were on my show. We, we didn't wait for ESPN to call them. Um, we, yesterday, we had, the, we had the mayor of Baltimore, had the mayor of Jackson last, last week. Uh, we've had numerous HBCU presidents. So we haven't waited for mainstream. And I'll say this, and it's really important for folks to hear. We do not wait for white validation. We know how to validate ourselves. And so that, to me, is going to be a big part as well, uh, telling those stories uh, and getting our people to understand that we can tell it just as well as anyone else. Uh, and also, what's important for us is providing the expertise in these areas. Uh, we are fully aware of some HBCUs that have cut deals where their bands or student organizations have been featured in various documentaries, and they got $20,000. But the production company sold it for several million. Well, having expertise now means we know how to negotiate those deals up front, and it's not going to be $20,000. So that's also part of this. Uh, it's, it's the knowledge that we bring to bear. And so when we sit in those rooms, folks know across the table, you're not going to get over on us because we have as much information as you do. And so that's really what our aim is as well, to be able to uh, highlight uh, the various programs and the individuals. And so we have to think about this deal beyond sports. You have to think about, again, the entire campus and the community. Questions? Another question? Anyone? That's it? No, can't be. <laughs> can't be. Anyone else have a question? Going once. Off script. I, I ask another one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, question. Yes, go ahead. So the, what, the, what, what, the work now we have to do as a conference, so the athletic directors through here will be working on a policy on how we will distribute those funds back to the schools. So that will be going forth in front of the presidents for their December meeting. And I mean, there are, they're like, I mean, I don't pull the SEC's handbook. I'm like, we can just take that. But I mean, the athletic directors will review it. We'll put something in front of them. They will review it. They'll decide how we want to move forward once it's approved then funds will be distributed that way. And you got to remember, when we talk about your institutions, so from a conference standpoint, when you talk about media rights, those are negotiated, but the universities still have their own individual rights as well. Correct. Uh, so they have their own individual brands, uh, licensing things along those lines yeah. uh, that go with it. And so uh, there are multiple ways. And, and, and that's, that's important because uh, you know, we should be, you look at the NFL, they monetize Every everything. Day. They, they parse and separate everything. There's a reason they're a $15 billion a year industry. Uh, and so historically what has happened, we've just given somebody everything. That's not, that's not really how, how, how you do this. And so it's really taking advantage of it. And again, being able to introduce schools, introducing these concepts to the advertising community, that's why this is so unique and different from what anyone else is doing, because by having a channel, now you're not, we're not having a philanthropic conversation. We're not going to foundations. Nope. We're going to where the 322 billion uh, that is being spent. That's a whole different conversation HBCUs have never played in, ever. First thing, bring us in to tell you. No, because no, no, seriously, I, I mean, when I say I visit those 65 campuses, I would stand there with the president and they would say, hey, we have this event. And I would go, are you shooting it? Like, what do you mean? 
Are you shooting it? I gave a speech at Grambling, and it was a basketball game that night, and I literally said, hey, are y'all streaming the speech? And they said, no. I said, why not? How we think everything is content. Everything. And so if you have speakers, you have events, but, but you have to understand, you have to see that. Most people don't even think about it that way. So part of this is also sitting down with each school and then, then doing an assessment. That's what I'm saying, going in and assessing um, uh, venues, uh, and again, utilize robotic cameras, what is your internet capability, all of that to be able to understand how do you do it on, as, as, on a, as cost efficient. Uh, because if you do, a, if you take, you know, I got a camera guy back here, but flew him in as air, as airline fees per diem, hotel, all of that, and so those are the things that we sort of go through because you have to do it efficiently, so you're not going broke and you're constantly in the red. Yep. So, so I, I, again, great question. This is what I tell every black creator, and HBCUs are huge black creators of content. Ooh. You're already doing it. Y'all yep. all over Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> TikTok. You're just not getting monetized <laughs> unless you're Kim Kardashian, who has hundreds and hundreds of millions. So the notion of content creation, of aggregating content, of presenting your best self is happening. I, and the question that was asked earlier about monetization, I think folks don't understand how powerful brands are. The Playboy bunny ears generate a billion dollars a year in licensing. There are some institutional conversations that should be had about how we reshape and reposition our brands and have them participate in the monetization exercise that's completely void because today, everybody with access to our venue can come, shoot, grab, party, <laughs> position, and not understand that they were part of uh, you can't do that at LSU, by the way. And I, I graduated from Oklahoma State, did some graduate programs at a couple other institutions. You can't do that. They understand the business of content. So the notion of what we've been able to do is position all the institutions that are on our platform today to coalesce them to having this homepage be the starting place for the conversation. And then it can go from there. Now, it's a trouble. It's a problem because they still want Roland's conversation about I want white validation. I have a press conference, but I don't want it to be on my platform. I can't, we can't do it until ESPN gets here. We were just in Times Square with our brands and our partners, and we had a conversation with some partners that said, well, I don't want to put that out there until it shows up on Good Morning America. We're in Times Square. You can go out and look at it right now. We're talking about this type of opportunity and what we're doing. So the notion of blacks owning cool and making everybody else stuff, billions of dollars, and, and I'll say this, and this is uncomfortable to say for folks who are from Jackson. There's a business happening at Jackson State. And the large part of that business is being monetized by a white media company called Barstool. And they got 25, 30 cameras, and they're shooting a reality show. And they're now, from what I hear, north of a billion dollars in ad revenue on their media platform. It's a gaming company. They do gaming, they do casinos. But the idea of black cool and monetization of black content, whether it's shot by them or us or someone else, is not a new notion. We've always been the show since they put a camera on us. Now we're positioned to be in the media business and drive monetization on black platforms with our fair equity share, and then we can participate in sharing that revenue with our, with our partners. And again, I want you to remember, being seen on a platform is not a monetization conversation. We've been seen for a long time but we haven't improved our institutions, we haven't invested, we haven't had the revenue share that puts us in a position where we can be Oprah as opposed to worshiping Oprah. So I really want us to understand that subtlety yeah, yeah. And, and that's really important. Yeah. Will? Uh, three questions on what you said to Harry Martin. When's your first screen on the Right now. Right now. <laughs> Will all the uh, championships uh, be on? Yes. The network? Mm -hmm. And give us an example of the You going to talk about Neil's? Okay, yeah. so, I'll, so let, I'll let him talk so about one of, the, one of the, I think, early partnerships we did is with a company called The Athlete, and it's not spelled like you think it's spelled. And it was announced. Matter of fact, we, we think it changed the landscape of Neil. We gave everybody at Gramlin an, on scholarship for athletics a Neil's opportunity. And it's done through a platform called The Athlete, and they're our partners in, in, uh, in the Times Square announcement. And that allows not only for the technology from a compliance perspective, 
but also creates an opportunity for them to be monetized and get that money directly to the students. And so when I do a deal with Walgreens for a couple hundred thousand dollars for an eight week run of commercials, I'm going to put a portion of that money into the NILS program that goes to the athlete that filters down to the students. And based on their social graph, you got a thousand followers, you got 10,000. Uh, I think Smash told me today that some of these band members have three million then they're going to participate based on that ratio. So we've done the work that now allows for every one of our institutional partners yep. to have a NILS program that we'll be pouring into. And Hardy's already negotiating deals where they said, well, I want the volleyball team from XYZ, and I want to, do, I want to sponsor XYZ with them. Well, it's not just the institution. It's not just Urban Edge Networks. It's now that student. Yep. And that is not – That's you can go out there and look on the athlete right now. You will see Gramlin's entire team. And, and, and I'll say this out loud, one of the transformational things we're going to be doing, I'm going to push to get our NILS program for the band. Now, the dancing girls on the band, they, they're trending. They, they, they run, but they're not participating. They're athlete, athletes as well, and they come from our institution, they come from our culture. So we're really looking at the HBCU culture, not as a gateway to professional sports, but a gateway to a professional life. Yep. La last thing I'll say, we, the deal that we just finished was with, uh, I'll say it, with Intuit. And they're very interested about financial literacy with one of our partners. They want to create a curriculum around it to overlay the curriculum that the folks have. And they think these students are going to be making money for a long time. And they're yep. also going to be good customers and maybe even do TurboTax this year. Come we on. want to give them a tax problem. And so they're looking at these opportunities in a very strategic way. And so uh, thank you for the question. But it's really about increasing the revenue share and turning the money around in our community and impacting lives in a positive way. Because media companies generally don't do that. They just say, hey, appreciate it. Right. See you later. I'll, I'll just give you a quick example. So uh, a couple weeks ago, Instagram, I got a notice from them. And they were like, hey, if you do 11 million views, you can do 150 reels in the month and make a $1,200 bonus. <laughs> that's 150 reels. That's five a day to hit 11 million views. Now, at that point, uh, and I could always check it, at that point, we probably did... Four and a half, we were, at that point of the month, we did four and a half million views on YouTube and we're at 40 grand. So here's what's happening right now. African Americans right now are TikTok, are complaining, whining, cussing the company out because they're not getting paid. We just understand when Clubhouse, who heard of Clubhouse? Yeah. Okay, y'all heard of Clubhouse. When yeah. Clubhouse launched, nine months after they launched, the valuation was $4 billion. How did it get there? Black people. We, we, have, we over index on phones, on pads, we over index on social platforms. We have been hugely successful at making other people billionaires, and not us. So when I talk about this reprogramming, we are now trying to reprogram our HBCU institutions, the alumni, and the students. Because if you're driving all of your content on Instagram, Instagram is getting paid, not you or the school. If you're driving it on the other platforms, uh, they're getting paid. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I'm an investor in Fanbase, Isaac Hayes III's uh, app, because that's content driven. So we're trying to utilize this initiative yep. to change the apps, to change the paradigm of how we monetize ourselves. To, to uh, Todd's point, we know who the trendsetters are in music, in fashion, in everything. Now the question is, how do you get paid? Because other people are sitting back and they're like, we can create multi-billion dollar companies on the back of African Americans and we're the ones who are not getting paid. And so that's why we're having different conversations. So imagine if you have a thousand students and you now get those thousand students to think as a collective when they are posting. So now you say a thousand students, now what's the total number of followers they have on Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, fan base, LinkedIn, go. Now all of a sudden you're going from a thousand students that may collectively have several million followers. Now, how do you sort of drive that? That's what we're trying to, uh, to get folks to think about, and that completely changes the game. Uh, and as I said, there is no other HBCU conference that is having this conversation we're having right now. Not one. Not MEAC, not SWAC, not CIAA, not any of them. This is why this uh, is groundbreaking and totally different. I just wanted to say, we got a question in the back right there. I'll get with Roy just one second. One thing I wanted to say that I think is, is, is important for everyone to hear. 
Hardy and I like to say this. We've never received a check from an HBCU. We bring checks to HBCUs. So we're not looking to make money off any one of the 101 HBCUs. We're in the business of positioning you to participate in the media business. And there's a lot of, what are they really doing? Well, what we're really doing is doing what you're already doing, but you're now participating in it right. and magnified it in a different way. So again, if you quote me on anything, quote the fact that me and my partner, Hardy, have never received a check and never intend to receive a check from an HBCU. We only want to bring value to you to participate in the largesse of the economies that you drive. Roy. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. So when Roland was talking a little bit about going in assessing, that's part of this partnership. So he'll now, but we have a meeting scheduled Thursday with the Council of Athletic Directors. Um, we'll be meeting with the team to start talking about how we're going to get that done. So part of it will be, okay, what's the equipment that we need if we don't have it? How do we get that, um, that they're going to help us get, um, which is cost savings for us. But also then how we can employ students. So most of our schools are already doing that, first of all, let me say that. So they're already doing it, but what they do get now is mentorship with a pro. I mean, you, you, you know, we can't, we can't lose. So that's what it's going to look like. There'll definitely be opportunities now with the, with the conference championship. We actually have a couple of interns here today, but with all the championships, there will be an opportunity for us to have students from our schools that will be participating and working with us through the championship. And what I'm interested in are, are not internships, but paid jobs. Yes. Yeah. So, so understand, what this is, so just take just what you just heard here. So you got GCAC that's going to be housed in this space that's black owned. And then the credit union announces sponsoring the next two years conference championships, black owned. So you're creating economic opportunities and now you're connecting the dots. Well, if you create an ecosystem, the ecosystem we're talking about is going to require PR. It's going to require logistics. It's going to require transportation. So now, if you're having a conference basketball championship, you're going to need a transportation company shuttling folks back and forth. So who are we looking for? A black transportation company. You're going to be having events. Who are we looking for? Black caterers. If you try to put those events on, who are we looking for? Black event planners. So there's an ecosystem that we have to think about. When I launched, when I built our studio, my production, my control room was built by a black engineering company. My lighting was installed by a black lighting company. My set was built by a black set design company. My green screen was built by a black drape company. Wasn't that hard to find. I just chose a look. So this is an ecosystem. So if you're having on the production end, you do, your, your, your production pieces, we're going to need a point of contact on each campus. You want to be able to train students, but not just train them as interns. You want them to have a place to land when they graduate. Yep. So if, I have, if I've trained someone for, from, from the moment they're a freshman, I've trained them to what I need because I'm training them not for where they are, for where I'm trying to get them to go. Now I have a pool of students now at eight institutions who I can hire from. Yeah. And I've created for other opportunities as well. So that's the thinking. So this is the creation of an ecosystem, not solely a sponsorship thing. So we, we actually, we're, we're at our time, and so we'll probably have to do some individual interviews at some point. We do need to get some photo ops. With that yeah, we do some we photo ops. This is going to be like a wedding. Uh, we're going to get them in, get them out, because uh, I actually go live in uh, 52 minutes. Yeah. Uh, no, 42 minutes from right here. Uh, and so uh, as a photographer. We got a photographer right here. Okay. So, I'd like, so first, let me say thank you, everyone who showed up to be here to participate with us. My mommy is here, so I want to acknowledge my Mama. She drove five hours from from Minden, Louisiana. Your mama's sitting there like, yeah, you better say I drove five hours. I don't know how you didn't start with that one. Listen, she's a proud graduate of Gremlin State University. There you go. Shout your mama out. She was Miss Cover Girl, 1974. All right. Who else she gonna shout out? My hubby, my daughter is here. They somewhere in here. Okay. My my other sister Jennifer. 
lampshade. That's all your husband get? My husband, he's somewhere in here. Man, let her husband say, my, my wife's husband somewhere in here. Where my husband at? I can't even say where. You ain't got to sing him to shout his name. There they go back there. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so my, where our interns, Kadeja intern, I see she made it all the way. She drove from LSU working on a doctoral program. Uh, Alex, where are you? Alex is a proud graduate recent of Howard University. <laughs> She's from New Orleans. I've known her for a while. She's our digital marketing intern. And Deja Williams, New Orleans, just graduated. Where are you, Deja? Come around so people can see you. She's an intern with the, with the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference. All right. And so those are our people. But I just want to say thank you so much for being here. It's been great to share in this. Our student athletes, we got some good stuff planned for y'all, so be ready. Um, we're going to take some pictures with our partners and our presidents first, um, then athletic directors, and then, hey, we need to get the student athletes up in these pictures. So we'll take a student athlete photo last, okay? All right. Our photographer is here. Who you want first? Let's go with our presidents, Bill, and our partners. Hardy, where are you? Man, um, y'all can start playing. Yeah, the band can play. Um, Hardy hard, and Ty, hard where are y'all? Come on. Come on up. And then athletic directors, y'all get in line because y'all will be next. We do have refreshments right around. We have water and snacks, so please take advantage of those. 